with JTEC. We're going to be talking about uh, rear differentials today, inspections, uh, components, parts, all that good kind of fun stuff. Um, it's going to be very minimal in the sense of we'll only be touching bases on a few things, but hopefully we get most of the uh, major components talked about, all right? So we're going to tear this thing apart real quick, and I've already taken the screws out. So as you can see, there's all kinds of nice little bearings and gears and all kinds of good fun stuff in here, all right? So one of the things you want to look at when you're doing this on here is the actual teeth here. So if you see any bluing on these teeth, most likely it's based on heat, okay? There wasn't any fluid and the heat's all going to be uh, damaged to it. As you can see, we put a little bit of the goop on it here. So what you're looking for with that is when you move the teeth around, and you see how the bearing is just barely into there, but it's right in the middle in the center. That means its teeth are lined up properly, okay? So here you got your spider gears. Now, a lot of places call it something different. Um, and then some of these calls like a differential gear. Uh, some of you might find a, call it a differential pinion gear mate. Some might call it spider gear. It's kind of whatever you want to call it. Um, this piece here with the number five on it, right here so some places call that one a um uh differential case you know it's just something you want to but realistically it's all the same thing but once you look in here you want to look at your, gear, your spider gears itself making sure that they are actually moving properly because if they're off then your whole gear is going to be off down here you have your um which is connected to the rear different uh correction the drive shaft that is also one, uh, another one of the um, uh, differential pinion gear mates, which is right down here. Now, with these, they all have washers and spaces put in them. So when you're lining these things up, if you're off, say one side or the other, the spacers in here, okay? And you literally move one spacer to the other until you get them lined up. Now, when you put these spacers in, one of the things you're looking for is you can kind of see a little bit of it right there. Is you never want to go uh, put the skinny ones on the outside. You always want to put the skinny ones on the inside. So the fat ones are on the outside, and basically it kind of squeezes it together in there, and it holds it in place. All right. Now, some stuff that could possibly go wrong that you're going to be looking for, and you can be hearing. So the stuff you could talk to with the actual customer is stuff like what kind of noise is it making, okay? And, you know, as I'm moving this thing around, I'm going to be looking at it. But, you know, if you have something like it's a steady vibration that increases with the vehicle speed, well, that can be caused by worn U-joints or an out-of-bounds of the drive shaft. Um, something else that could be wrong is there's like a howling or a whine during acceleration, you know, over a... You know, over small, large pinions. Well, that could easily be the, it's usually caused by worn ring or pinion gears or improper gear setup. So if you have, if you don't set the gears up right, you know, it could be whining in here and the gears could be making all kinds of noise. Um, if you got it clunking, for God's sakes, when you're starting to move or you're, it's getting on and off the gas. So, you know, as soon as you're, you're adding gas to it, you take off. Most likely it's going to be bad U-joints or a worn transfer case and everything in here is starting to wear out. So that's just some stuff to be, you know, you verify the complaints, you know, and, you know, stuff to other stuff to look at that you might have, you know, is the actual parts. And so with the splines here, you also got to look at what year it is. So like after 1993, it's going to be about a 20... Uh, six to 29 splines and you know for like a on a Ford you're gonna have about 31 to 33 splines so that's stuff to look at so if you get into it and you realize oh shit you know someone's trying to put you know say the wrong type of parts in there with you know your mix matching parts of course that's gonna cause an issue so something else to look at on here is when you're filling with uh, oil when the rear differential fluid, okay? You don't fill these things full of fluid, half ways, okay? Uh, here's, right there is the um, tube on it. So, 
All right, so when I was talking about the fluids and everything, right here, so if you can get your finger into it or check the fluid, you're only gonna get just a small amount. So when you put your finger in there, it's just the tip of your finger, nothing more than that, all right? Um, but all in all, the biggest thing, you gotta look for operation. Does it move? Does it turn? Is there any binding whatsoever? Um, does the gears operate as designed? Stuff like that you really need to look at to make sure everything is lined up, to make sure everything is geared up right, you know? Another good thing is right here on the teeth, so where I'm rubbing my finger at, it should be rough, it should feel like sandpaper. If this is smooth, then you're out of gear. If you have pitting along in here in the teeth, that's another that you're that lined up wrong. And it could be your fluid and you got stuff in there. So there's a lot of stuff to look at. This is something that you don't just run through real quick. You're gonna actually take your time and look at, you know, check for dirt and gears. You'll actually pull all this stuff out and go individual piece by piece to look at, all right? Uh, hope there's a few things you can look at, and if there's any questions, let me know.